All right, so once you are passing the test for the server, on we go. And we're, we're doing the same thing every time. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna read some code, we're gonna understand what's in it, and we're gonna add something to it. So at this point, your server knows how to, in response to a request, um, you know, basically return over the internet um, a string that contains that, that JSON, which has all that information in it about the course. So you, and you could deploy that anywhere on the internet. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move up a level. We're gonna actually add support into your client for doing this. Um, okay, so, and again, this is the same pattern. So we have to understand how a particular part of the client works and figure out how to mimic it um, in a slightly different way. So, and in this case, we also, you know, this will be in the write-up, but we also need to look a little bit about uh, what the test suite actually uh, expects to, to happen. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's dinner time. Sorry. Um, all right, so let's let's look at at at, uh, at what the what the let's go back to the test suites, um, and we're going to look a little bit about at what the client side tests actually have to do. So now we're focusing on the client uh, test, and the client goes through all the courses that it knows about, and it calls this get course method, and and this is a method that doesn't exist yet. This is a method you need to add, um, and it provides a callback. So this is another case where because the client's actually gonna to have to communicate with the server, we provide a callback that is going to get called when the data becomes available. Um, and so there's two things we need to add here. If we go and look at client.java, let's look at summary. So this is, summary is actually used by the main activity, right? Remember, when the main activity starts up, in the onCreate method, we call get summary, and we pass ourselves as a callback because we have this summary response method. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow that same pattern, but we're going to allow the client, somebody using the client, to request information just about a specific course rather than about an entire semester. So let's look at the get summary method. So the get summary method took a year and a semester. Um, if we look at the test suite, we're going to see that the get course method, the signature of it is that it takes a summary. So I create a course summary and I use the summary to make the request. Um, okay, and so again, we could we could start stubbing this out. We could say public void get course, uh, and then that's going to take. Uh, I'll use this non-null annotation, which helps me make sure that it's not a um, right. And then as the second argument, I'm going to take uh, something that implements these course client callbacks. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, okay, so now once I have this, I go and look at my test suite. You'll see that that's going to go away. Uh, because I provided this method, but now I have this other problem, which is that I haven't added the callback yet. And so up here, let's look at the course client callbacks. Right now, we only have one that gets called when I get information about summaries, but I also need a way to tell the client that I've got information about a course. And again, if we look here at, at the way that this is done, um, and this is, you know, I'll, I'll expand this because it was collapsed into the into the sort of lambda syntax. So it's called course response and it accepts a summary and a course. And so that's uh, what I need to add up here. Uh, default void course response. This provides me a way to pass back information about, so I'm gonna have a summary and then a course. Uh, and then just like I did up, up here and I need to import this, right? Uh, my, this is my new model that I just created. Um, and now it's angry because there's no Java doc and that's okay. Um, we will, we'll get there eventually. Uh, why is it, what's it, what's it name about here? Messing on java.com and okay, that's fine. Um, now if I look here, you'll see now all the errors in this are gone. Now it doesn't work yet, it's just gonna compile. Um, what do I need to do in client.java? Same thing I did in server.java. Read some code, mimic it, make it work, slightly differently to accomplish a different task. So let's look at the get summary method. What does it do? Get summary is responsible for making a call to the server uh, web API. 
So get summary, what it did is it essentially made a call where the path looked like summary slash year slash semester. Well, you just got done implementing a new set of routes on your server. That's sometimes what we call them. Those routes look like course slash year slash semester slash department slash number. And so you're going to construct a request in the same way. And then, and then all of this is the same. The method is the same. This is a get request. You're requesting information from the server. The URL is one that you're going to construct. And the response is very similar. So when you get back a good response, now in here, what we're, here it's a little different. So here what we're expecting is an array of summaries. When you make a re request to this server for this particular route, you expect a course. So you're going to use the object mapper similarly, but instead of deserializing an array of summaries, you're going to deserialize a single course. And then the callback's different, right? Instead of the callback for summary response, since this, this is not a summary response, we're going to use this new de, de, uh, course response callback that we created, and we're going to pass the arguments it needs. So summary, can you can use what was passed to the method, right? And then the course, you're going to use the course that you deserialized from the information that was provided by the server. So again, you know, approach this in the same way that you approached the server side code. Read it, kind of understand, you know, part of the reason that we're doing this is to really encourage you to understand the code that we've already given you. It isn't a huge amount, um, but we really do want you to dig into it and, and understand it, right? Because the design patterns here are very, very common to many, many different types of applications. Um, okay, so same approach in client.java, read what's here, Mimic it effectively. Uh, once you have that test working, you'll be ready to go on to uh, maybe some of the more fun parts of AMP, which is actually working on the front end design.